You don't ask to be part of G.I. Joe. You get asked. So will you subscribe? <laughs> Say yes, you idiot. He's a real American hero. Well, it's Veterans Day, so I think you should hear a story about some soldiers. Here's the story of G.I. Joe. <laughs> has to be taken out of chaos by someone with complete control. So we start off in France during the Renaissance. I thought G.I. Joe was a real American hero. We'll get there, but first we have to find out that some guy was a traitor, and he vows that My sons will continue to rise long after I am gone, as will their sons. And the French guy should have been like, oh, well, we'll go kill your kids too. But instead, they give him a mask, so no one will ever see his face again. I guess they think that nobody will buy weapons from a guy in a mask or something? We then go to the future, where we see that the French let the guy keep his jewelry, and his great-grandson, who sounds like he has peanut butter stuck to the roof of his mouth, tells us about a new weapon. It quickly converts to eating any and all material in its path. But I'm not sure what would happen if you were out of signal range, or if it got cloudy out. I mean, I really wouldn't trust tech until you can get Wi-Fi to work in wind over 5 miles an hour. We gotta find the kill switches. They're already way too far out of range. They give the weapon to some guys, and they're supposed to take it someplace. This guy Duke is the leader, and you can tell he's tough because he has a scar on his cheek. Is it gross? No, it's a little one. In a place where you can still see he's attractive, but you know he's at least been in one fight. Or maybe fell off his bike as a kid or something. He looks fine! And he's also one of those guys that just commands leadership. Detail, attention! But during the transport of the weapon, his buddy Ripcord tells him that he wants to transfer to the Air Force because he's a pilot and he misses flying. Why didn't he just join him to begin with? We don't find out, because they get ambushed by this UFO that shoots blue goo. Oh my god. The UFO starts blasting all the helicopters and jeeps because they want the warheads. Alright, listen up. NATO wants the best of the best, that's why we're here. Couldn't they make it blow up that way? Yeah, especially since they packed them turned on for some reason. Well, the UFO lands, and these guys in full armor rush out, and so does this chick in a leather cat suit who doesn't realize it's dark outside. What kind of outfit is this anyway? And she's clearly combat ready, with her hair down and hoop earrings and rhinestones all across her exposed cleavage. While her soldiers take out the best of the best, while she takes the missiles and checks out Duke. Duke rescues Ripcord from the crash, but almost gets dead. Like that's gonna happen. This chick stops the soldier from killing him, and we see that Duke can't recognize his ex-girlfriend if she has sunglasses on. Anna? A ninja jumps out of an airplane and cuts up some people. He also shoots some of them too, which is weird, because the best of the best couldn't do crap to these guys with bigger guns. This redhead also starts videotaping people with her crossbow. We'll let CNN show the world how well they perform. Duke and his ex fight, and in the time it takes her to escape, this guy manages to land his plane and meet with Duke on the ground. Or maybe Duke was just sad long enough for him to get there. These guys also want the case. No way. What do you mean by never? Like, never, never, ever? They project a hologram from a sword that tells them who they are and what they're good at for us. State your name and rank. Duke. Easy ripcord. How do you know me? And they're like, you guys already have nicknames. You should join us. And Duke's like, I want to join. And they're like, well, that's good because we're recruiting you. If you thought you were the best of the best, well, we're the cream of the crop. The alpha dogs. Well, Duke and Ripcord want to know who they are, but... We get tossed for telling. Which is funny because everybody else seems to know. Kill them. Kill all the Joes. What's the status of the Joes? The pet only mentioned in whispers. Retargeting Joe submarine. Does uh, announcing your identity on clothing help with the covert part of your job? So they go through the swimming pool, and the ghost of Peanut Butter Man goes through Ripcord and tells Duke his team sucks. Duke tries to fight the hologram, but lucky for McCullen, Ripcord holds him back. He wants to make sure that the missiles are intact, so he makes Breaker get out of the way so he can check. Everything is fine, so he disappears into the table. Where are your manners? We then see that he sent the UFO to get the missiles because he needed the money, but also wanted to keep the weapons. He lets Anna know that he had the Joes activate a homing beacon and that she needs to go get them. Yes, Daddy. We see that he's in a submarine and is headed to a base where people just play with blowtorches willy-nilly. We then learn that the same bugs that were in the missiles have been injected into some dudes. They make these guys totally obedient because they eliminate pain and fear, or at least that's what the Cyborg Espresso machine says. McCullen plans on blowing up some major cities so people will have to turn to him for help. Wouldn't people figure out he did it if they were attacked by a weapon that he made? They would, but I suppose they could make him think that he won until they can turn off the nanomites, and then they could arrest him. 
Back in the pit, the Joes are trying to find out who Anna is, and Duke uses a picture of them that he carried around in his pocket for four years, but somehow has barely gotten bent as their ticket in. I'm only gonna buy one of these. In France, we see that Anna is married to the scientist, who's also a baron. That is wow, she really traded up, huh? And this guy Storm Shadow is there to cock block him. Why doesn't he want him to eat chicken? Well, actually, it's McCullen, and uh, he's a vegetarian. So McCullen is totally obsessed with Anna to the point where he has her brainwashed to be in love with him. Albeit a rather unwilling one. And has her marry the scientist guy that can activate the warheads for him. But I'm not sure why he can't just do it himself. I mean, he did invent him. But if you think that Duke carrying around a picture of him and Anna is weird, she carries around an engagement ring from him, and it's still in the box. Hey, Joes! Hell no. Bad jokes. So Duke and Ripcord need to have a training montage that starts with them using the standard issue super suit, and none of the rest of them seem to wear on a rescue mission. Wouldn't you want your best soldiers wearing the good suits and not the new guys? Well, see, you start off with the super technology, and eventually you get so badass you don't need it anymore. Well, another trainer shows up on a tricycle, and he shows them how to fight with those American gladiator sticks. Joe style. Because that comes up often. And they shoot at holograms in a gun training course. Joe style. And then they learn how to drive submarines through hula hoops. Joe style. They make the cut and join right before Anna and Storm Shadow drill into the pit. They kill CoverGirl, who is only armed with an iPad, and let General Hawk live so he can hit the alarm button and stop their escape. So the top 1% of all soldiers in the world go down like little bitches if they don't have nicknames. The ones left pair up for fights, including the two ninjas, who I guess are related? Hello, brother. And it seems that Scarlet doesn't know how invisibility cloaks work. But we've seen that before. Storm Shadow puts on a jetpack, and once Anna gets the nukes, grabs onto his belt, and we can see that her cat suit is fireproof as they get away. How about you trampoline? So all the Joes got injured, but just with minor cuts that don't interfere with their attractiveness. We are tough! But we're also sensitive. Snake Eyes has a flashback to when he stole some noodles, and Storm Shadow tried to kill him and proceeded to ruin the rest of the food to stop him. And this is a fighting style he'll use for the rest of his life. Is that blood? Spaghetti sauce. Don't ask. The dude that's been whistling the whole story is laying down on a surgical table and is about to have a procedure. They say it'll improve him being a master of disguise, but so far we've only seen him wear a hat in the pit and an eye patch in the desert with no one else around. Yes, as a master of disguise, you have no equal, my friend. And injects nanobugs into his face, and he turns into the president. Ripcord finds out that McCullen was behind the attack, and Breaker manages to find out who Anna is, even though Duke already told him. I can only assume that their facial recognition software couldn't ID her because she was wearing glasses. But Duke has a flashback to when he tried to help Anna's brother on a mission. Double bubble! Double, double. It always helps me! Rex was doing some science crap, and the building got blown up. Hey, genius! I'm gonna get you out of here. Duke stupidly tried to outrun the missiles and pull him out in time, but he failed. Anna and Storm Shadow break into her husband's lab with fidget spinners, and they try to get him to weaponize the weapons. He does, and then Storm Shadow kills him just for kissing his wife. Forgive my jealousy. The Joes get to the lab right as they're leaving and start to chase them. Snake Eyes is hanging onto the car, so they can track him and blow up the car to save the city. Well, that doesn't work, so Snake Eyes crashes it into a train. I'd avoid potholes if I were you. So the nickname people survive. Next time, I'll drive. And they go on to blow up the Eiffel Tower. McCullen wants to attack Paris because they were mean to his ancestor. And of course, they go after the Eiffel Tower because Americans are stupid and wouldn't know that Paris was under attack if they hit the Louvre. But wouldn't the bugs just eat the tower before the news got there? Shut up. We have to see the landmarks be destroyed or else we don't know where we are. So even though during the chase they had to track Snake Eyes instead of the Warhead, they now have the ability to track the Warhead and the kill switch. I don't have them! Where are they? Storm Shadow shoots the missile at the Eiffel Tower and it starts to get eaten. When all else fails, we don't. The French are pretty upset. Duke flies into their jet and turns off the bugs. They try to retrieve the memories from the driver of Anna's car, but the bugs eat him before they can get anything. They get arrested, but General Hawk, who's now in a wheelchair because he got his chest cut, bails them out. It's one tough bastard. They find out where McCullen's base is through math and go to rescue Duke. They somehow get a submarine and head to the North Pole. Duke grabs the case and takes off running, but I'm not sure where he was going. And what was your plan? Apparently he turned on the homing beacon back when he was running. The Joes use their fish-shaped cameras to spy on the base, and we see they have missile tubes and more guys with flamethrowers just standing around. That McCullough got some gadgets. So the missiles have been launched, and Scarlet needs to get to this command center so she can guide Ripcord, who's now flying this experimental plane because we found out he was a pilot earlier, to the missiles. And they need to act fast, so they better make sure to say goodbye to each other and change clothes. I'm in a whole new outfit now. Nice shoes. 
So Snake Eyes has to take out this pulse cannon so Heavy Duty can launch an assault on the outside. But first, they have to get through this room with pressure-plated floors. Anything larger than a quarter that touches that floor gets fried. And he handles it like this, because that's how pressure works. But Storm Shadow tries to stop him, after he's already done it. And who says you're not a thinker? They fight, and Snake Eyes eventually kills Storm Shadow. So the president seemed like he knew what Cobra was trying to do and they just had the missiles. Any threats? Demands? None so far, sir. We take this to mean the terrorists are unfocused, no clear goals. No. It means they intend to use them. But now that they're launched, he seems pretty clueless. But they haven't made any demands. What's their plan? So we find out that the espresso machine is actually Anna's brother Rex. You son of a bitch! But she doesn't know he's alive, even though they work together. He's gonna turn Duke, but Anna's love makes her overcome the nanomites that are controlling her. He infected his sister? Well, yeah, I mean, she was really sad that he was dead. He could have just told her he was alive. Or at least he could have told Duke, so that way he wouldn't feel like he let her down. But that does bring something else up. How can she have emotional responses throughout the story if she's programmed to follow orders? And they're completely obedient. Of course. Did you hesitate when you saw him? No, this had nothing to do with him. <laughs> now you have to admit, you had that coming. Deep down, you're still the same man I fell in love with. All the ex-drama wouldn't happen, especially if she still loves him. But now Rex wants to kill her, because she loves Duke again. Thanks for ruining the mood, Rex. And McCullen grabs a flamethrower that someone left lying around. So since Duke shot him, I guess the entire base is exploding? So they need to escape. Duke outruns all the explosions while carrying Anna, and they get to a sub before the base is destroyed. What's he doing with her? Anna is back to her old self, but still remembers her assassin training, and shoots at the subs chasing them. You were my best student. Rex and McCullen get away, but they have GPS of the iceberg the base was in, and find another route. Rex blows up the ice, and the Joes have to outrun the water. Duke and Anna have to outrun the explosions, and of course, everybody makes it out. I didn't expect that. Rex infects McCullen to heal him, and makes him into this metal dude called Destro. And it seems like he might have mixed feelings on the change. I've finally taken my place in the long line of McCullens. What have you done to me? Rex also puts on a mask and wants to be called the Cobra Commander. And they immediately get arrested for having such stupid names. They go back to the pit and Duke and Ripcord officially become part of the team. Again! I heard you the first time. Unfortunately, the president starts whistling and we know that Cobra is still a threat. What happened to the real president? Mr. President, we're going to need you to like and subscribe. So that's what this is all about. So now you know the story of G.I. Joe, and knowing's half the battle. What's the other half? Um, violence. Lots of violence. Just doing my job. Wow, that was a bit nasty. <laughs>